Okay, I think we are live. I am going to just refresh my screen here to make sure that you all can see me. So it is coming up right now. Oh, it looks good. Oh my goodness. Hello, everybody, and welcome to Brandy's Cards. I haven't seen you guys in a couple of weeks, so I've been really looking forward to this. I am so excited to be with you here tonight, and I hope y'all are ready for a fun craft night. It is Friday night fun night here uh, um, with my new table. Oh my gosh. Yeah, so I've retired my pots that I used to sit on. Yes. I used to sit on some pots, but I've retired those and I have a new beautiful craft table. So I'm so excited. So we're going to do a video um, and show that to you and share that with you, but um, that will be for another day. So we're not going to show you that today, but um, it may look a little bit different. So hi Priscilla, thank you for being here and Miss Patty. Hi Marsha. Oh my gosh, we saw Marsha last night at our team event. We did a team craft and share event. It was so much fun. We all came into a Zoom together and then we split up into different rooms and just were crafting and sharing and fellowshipping. So it was just really a lot of fun. I really appreciate you joining us. All right, so who else is in here? Please tell me who you're from and say hi so that I can see you're in here. Hi, Kat and Cindy, Nancy. So glad to have y'all here, and Diane, and Painted Moose. <laughs> I'm so glad you're in here, Wendy. So glad to have you. And I also saw Nana Moose in here, which is Miss Peggy. So thank you for being here, Miss Peggy. And Deborah. Hi, Jamie Priest. Hello, hello. Jamie is just always so supportive, and I just appreciate you so much. Um, all right, so um, helping me tonight is Amanda. So she is kind of right across from me over here and she's waving at everybody. Um, so Amanda is here and Priscilla is also in the chat. And so they are both helping me. So if you, um, you know, if you have any questions and I can't always read the comments um, when I'm crafting and stamping and trying to think. <laughs> if you ever tried to like, you know, read comments and think, it just, it really does not work for me. Um, and so they're here to help and um, I just really appreciate that. So thank you ladies for doing that for me. And of course, there's a lot of other team members of mine in here too that are also super helpful. So um, I think everybody's in good hands and we want you to have a lot of fun. So today is April 30th of 2021. So if you're watching the replay after this date, well then you're, I'm um, sorry, if you're watching it after that date, then you're watching the replay, right? So um, I'm just so glad everyone is here. I'm just kind of letting people get on. Hi, Martha. Oh my gosh, hi, Lisa. I'm so glad you joined us last night too. That was super fun, it was awesome. Awesome, awesome, Sherry and look, Diane is in here. Hi, Susan Drew. Oh my goodness. So, you guys know that my host code gifts this month were the three background stamps. And so I had the Wild Rose, I'm gonna just grab it really quick. It was the Wild Rose, the Stack Stone, and the Dry Brush. Now we had some beautiful gems, but I showed you those gems a couple weeks ago. Um, but I was really excited about these background stamps, um, you know, and they, I just, I love doing backgrounds. And so I thought, you know what, those would be really cool to give as a gift. And then I got a bunch of emails that said, okay, we want to see a couple of projects with those background stamps. So I thought, you know, maybe today is the perfect day to do that, um, to bring you guys a few projects. And I'm going to write some tutorials that are going to come um, when you get your host code gift. Hopefully you'll also get the tutorials that I'm going to write from tonight too. So that'll be fun. Hi, Deborah and Joe. Hi, Shirley, Vicki and Miss Gloria and Jill. Thank you all for being here. I'm so grateful to have you here with me tonight. Um, you know, I'm going to go ahead and just, I think I'm going to just get started and share here. Um, the annual catalog has shipped and I'm hoping crossing my fingers that everybody has gotten their catalog. If you haven't, just let me know, okay? Um, if you've placed an order with me in the last 12 months, you've, you've been sent a catalog, um, but sometimes the mail is a little wonky. Um, so just reach out to me and let me know, and I'll be sure to check into that and see if I can't send you another one, okay? So that's not a problem. The catalog goes live on May 4th, so we just have a few more days. I'm super excited. Um, I can't open it for you yet today, 
but on May 4th, we're going to dive into this thing, and I am so excited about that. Now, you guys may have heard a couple promotions that are coming up. The first one is the collect, um, Connect, Craft, and Collect. And so I just love this promotion because if you place an order, um, you know, an order of 100 and it looks like what? $250, you get an extra $25 in host rewards. So that's going to give you an extra $25 on top of the already host rewards. So it's a really great promotion. Um, and we all like to get additional free host rewards for more, more goodies, right? Um, I just, uh, I just love our Stampin' Up! stuff. And of course, if you place your order with me, I'll contact you and I will send you a gift for that order too. You're not going to use the host code on an, on an order like that, right? Because I want you to get those host rewards. But of course, I will reach out and have a gift for you too. And then if you're interested in joining Stampin' Up!, I would love to have you join my team. Stampin' Up! is starting a new joining promotion. Um, and it's always really exciting. And I'm always excited to see what kind of additional offers that they, that they have. And so this one starts on G uh, May 4th, okay? So when the catalog starts. And so when you join, you get an extra $30 in merchandise. So you pay $99 plus tax and you get $155 in merchandise. So that's a pretty good deal. Um, and then you get to join my team and join us for some craft and share nights because I have already put some more on the calendar and I'm gonna let my team know what dates those are. So I'm super excited. Um, and of course the opportunity to, you know, to join us on the Creative 8 retreat. Uh, you have the opportunity to earn that as well and all of the other fun things that come with the friendships and the fellowship uh, through uh, being a Stampin' Up! demonstrator is pretty fantastic. And of course, you can do it as a hobby demonstrator too. You don't have to, uh, you don't have to do videos or sell the product. Um, you know, the only thing you have to do is maintain your quarter to stay active. So, but we can talk about all of that. Just reach out to me and I'd be more than happy to share all of those details with you. Okay, so I'm gonna look down and just see, hi Marsha. When is the last day that we can order from the old catalog? May 3rd. That would be the last day, May 3rd. May 4th starts the new catalog. So that's super exciting. Um, we're all really excited about that. Our, we got to pre-order a few items, but my wish list is ginormous because it was a few items, not all the things that I was hoping to get. So I'm really excited about that. All right, hi Priscilla more things for me to get for free. I hear you, right? We love free stuff. I know I do. Hi, Thelma. Hello, Thelma and Susan. I know you guys talked to Amanda today. I hope you guys are doing well. I was in here getting ready for today. So I was in here as a busy little bee, trying to like pull everything together. Um, so um, I'm sorry I missed your call, but Amanda had a big time with y'all. So super fun. Okay, well, I think I am ready to show you our projects. Are you guys ready to get started? Okay, so over here we have our original, our old catalog, right? Well, it's not old yet. Um, this catalog is good through May 3rd, um, but I'm super excited because right here on page 138, let me show you here, on page 138, there it is right here. Okay, cool. So these are the background stamps. And I was really excited because these stamps that, um, that I'm offering as my host gifts, they're actually carrying over. And they carried over into the new catalog. So I was super, super excited about that. So if you were unable to uh, place an order and earn them for free, well, you'll still have the opportunity to purchase them at a later date. So I was really excited about that. Um, and so this is the dry brush, this is the stacked stone, and um, you know, this is the small picture of the wild rose. Wild rose is, right? So super fun, super cute background stamp. And I think that, um, I think you guys will have a lot of fun with this. And so, you know, I've had a couple people say to me, well, how do I use these background stamps? Like, you know, they're so big and how do I use them? And so I'm gonna show you um, one of the stamps, so they are large, right? So when you open them up, um, I've already taken the, the plastic off this one. I generally don't mount my, sti mount my stickers. However, you certainly can, right? It makes them more sticky with that cling. 
But one of the two ways you can use is one of our blocks. We have an F block, and this fits perfectly. So that would be block F. And you know, we have nine blocks, and once you have them all, you don't need any more, right? Um, it's always nice to have a few extra, of course. Um, but as far as size goes, you, you generally don't need too many more than that. The nine, you'll have one that will fit every stamp set. That is the goal. Or you could use our Stamparatus, right? We love the Stamparatus. That thing is like a rock star. And so I am reaching down right now to grab it. And so I'm gonna pull this up here and kind of show you. So put that back in my little, little arm here. And so this is the Stamparatus. And this is, um, this is a, a fabulous tool. It's going to help you get the perfect ink. You know, you're going to ink it up and stamp it down. And I'm going to show you here a little bit um, into our presentation here. I'll show you how that works here in a moment. But I love my Stamparatus. I use it all of the time. And I'm always amazed at some of the techniques that demonstrators come up with when it comes to using the Stamparatus. So I'm going to go ahead and open back up to page 138 because you guys know that when I am looking for some creative juices, I always start in my Stampin' Up! catalog. And so right here, I absolutely loved this. And so I was like, okay, well, I want to recreate that. And I was trying to figure out how Stampin' Up! had done it. Um, and so it took me a few tries, but boy, was it worth it. So I'm going to show you. This is, um, <laughs> I'm gonna show you that one I think next. So check this out. Oh, I know this is not the pretty one. No, no. Um, it actually started out like this and it was like, whoa, something went terribly awry there. Um, but I'm gonna show you how I fixed that because we're gonna switch it up to some other colors. And so, and I'll show you why that that happens here in a minute. Um, but basically what they did is they took that um, ornate stamp set um, the Ornate Styles stamp set. And what they did is they stamped it twice. And so the reason that I wanted to show you this is because I stamped this big flower this direction and then I turned it the other way and I stamped it down here. All right. So then after that, I just continued to kind of look at that picture and I improvised a little bit. And so here is the card that I came up with from the Stampin' Up! catalog. And so here you can see that they used a different sentiment, right? Theirs was a little bit different. Um, and I changed the way, you know, the orientation of my oval. And I added the pool party. There's a stitched rectangle back here. And then I've got my ribbon and I added a few uh, jewel rhinestones. And so you can see that. Now they had their leaf here. I used the sprig. I believe it's called the sprig punch. And so that's what I used. Um, you know, you could use just about anything, right? You don't, and you could use any ribbon you'd like to. I'm not sure if this ribbon is the exact ribbon or not. I wasn't too concerned about that. Um, so that's where I started. And um, so I'm gonna show you, we're gonna take these three colors today. These are some happy, bright, fun colors. And I'm excited to show you um, how beautiful they can be, um, just like the colors. And you know, just let me share these colors with you. You're probably wondering. So this is Pear Pizzazz, this is Pool Party, and this is Highland Heather, okay? So those are the three colors um, in this card. It's absolutely gorgeous. Um, I wish you could, you know, really get, um, just see it up close. So this is Highland Heather, and that's your pool party. So it's just lovely. Absolutely beautiful. And it was funny because I wasn't sure if I was gonna like that background stamped or that black in there, but I absolutely loved it. Um, so here we go. So what they did, or what I think that they did, um, I'm able to, in the Stampin' Up, um, we're able to pull a, uh, we're able to pull kind of a product list of what the um, designers used. And so I kind of looked at the products used and I was like, okay, so I'm gonna give this a go. Um, and I have mistakes here and I have, you know, I have the successful ones here for you too. And I'm kind of, I'm excited to show you them all. So here is how I did it. So if you're gonna do the original card, 
I did the pool party down the center. Because we're gonna change it up right now, I'm gonna take my stamp pad and I'm gonna go right down diagonal. Now this is the way I did it, of course. Y'all can find, you know, you can do it a different way or change the orientation. I'm just gonna give you an idea of how I did it and see, you know, see where you guys take it from there. So this is Poppy Parade, that was Daffodil Delight. So Poppy Parade, that's gonna go up here in the corner, just like that. And I'm not worried about it getting on, um, some of the yellow getting on my red or my Poppy Parade. It's a pretty dark color, so it's not, um, and that's why I started with that lighter color. This is Pumpkin Pie, and I'm just gonna kind of tap over here on my Pumpkin Pie. Perfect. All right, so are you guys ready to see the magic? Well, there's not yet, not yet. We need our little sponge dobby do things, okay? Because do you remember when I showed you this one? Do you see those harsh lines? If I were to stamp it right now, I would have those hard lines in there. We don't want that, okay? So what I'm gonna do is I have my sponge dauber and I'm just going to dob kind of the, um, you know, the edge of the Poppy Parade over that Daffodil Delight. And then I have the Pumpkin Pie dauber, because, you know, I found it is best if you kind of switch daubers. It is, you know, because it just kind of muddies it up a little bit if you kind of get, you know, you get it mixed up too much. Okay, and then the beauty of the Stamparatus. And I like to use the Stamparatus because I can kind of put, if I have a shirt or a paper towel, you can kind of go back and forth and get good pressure so you're gonna get a good coverage, right? Um, and so then when you bring it up, look how fabulous that is. Oh my gosh, I love it. So I have done a bunch of these and you know, you just have to play with it. And every time you do it, I, you know, it could look a little bit different each and every time, but it is so much fun. So I'm gonna get my cutting board and I'm gonna bring that up here. And so I am just gonna trim this down. I have a Whisper White base here. And so that's gonna be my card base. And I wanna trim this down just a little bit. The reason I left it big is so that I'd quit, I would have a few you know, options. Sometimes my edges might not be as good or you know, you just never know. So I like having the option of what I like best. So I just cutting that down a little bit and then we're gonna come up here to five and a quarter. So I'm cutting it to four and five and a quarter is what I'm cutting it to. So that looks fantastic. I love it. I love playing with this. It is so much fun. Okay, so what we're gonna do is we are going to fold our Whisper White or Basic White cardstock. I still have some Whisper White left, so I'm still kind of using that a wee bit um, until that is gone, but um, I also love our Basic White. I really like the Basic White thick paper, honestly. That's what I've been using the most. So I'm just gonna look over at the comments and see, uh, see, hi, Anne Marie. Oh, you love the color combo. It's happy and it's bright, right? It is so pretty. It just, it's a feel good color. Um, hi, Darlene. I'm so grateful y'all are here with me today. Um, okay, so now I'm like, well, what color or what flower, you know, do I wanna put on this? Well, actually I kept thinking what image, but I went straight to the painted poppies. You know why I did that is because I thought, oh my goodness, some Stampin' Blends and some, whoop, that lid came off. Some Stampin' Blends um, on these painted poppies would be beautiful with like, you know, that poppy uh, parade, you know, that pretty red. So what I did is I stamped my image in Memento Black ink. And the reason that I did that is because I'm using the Stampin' Blends, which are alcohol markers. So you're gonna wanna use the right type of black ink, right? So that's what I've done here. And I'm gonna show you kind of how I colored it. So I love coloring with my Stampin' Blends. And you know, and I always do it a little bit different each and every time it seems. So um, this one is Mango Melody. So that's what this one is. And this is a really small flower, right? And so the idea for me is I just wanted some of that, you know, some of that yellow or kind of that orangey yellow 
in there. And you know, it's, I'm not really blending or anything quite yet. So I have a light poppy parade and I'm just looking to make sure you can see me good. So I have a light poppy parade and I'm just adding a bit of that color on here as well. Just like that. And you know, don't, don't worry too much. Just kind of get in there and add some color. You can always go back and add more, right? So that is the beauty of our blends is that if you want it darker, well then you can add more dark. If you want it lighter, well you've got that opportunity as well. So that is, uh, that is always something that you can do. So this is our dark poppy parade and this is where it gets absolutely beautiful. So I'm gonna add that kind of to the tips of my flower and I like to kind of follow the lines of the flower, kind of down towards the center. Um, you know, I feel like flowers have so many shades and so many depths that, uh, you know, I just really love that. Love it, love it, love it. Okay, so now what I'm gonna do is I'm actually gonna go back to that dark mango melody and I'm going to use that to kind of blend. And actually, I want the other end. So I'm going to do the, um, the brush tip end. And I'm going to kind of, it actually sort of lightens it a little bit, but it also blends those reds really nicely. And it also kind of brings kind of more of a, I don't know if you want to say like an orangey yellow tint in there. It kind of really, really brightens it up. Now I have Granny Apple Green. I love me some Granny Apple Green. You could probably, you know, you could use probably any other green too, but um, I love this green. So I'm gonna use the bullet end, only because this is quite a fine, fine line. So I'm gonna try to be steady here. Let me tell you, it is hard when you are like standing and talking. You know, I can't even chew gum and, and walk at the same time, <laughs> nonetheless. I have to look and, whew, okay, that is a long stem. All right, steady, here we go, we're rounding the corner. You guys are laughing at me at home, but you know what I'm talking about. I wanna see if you guys can do it. <laughs> it's quite fun. All right, so here, this is the light granny apple green, all right? And so I'm just kind of coming back in here and kind of, you know, kind of fixing that line a little bit and trying to soften it maybe a little. And I don't mind if I get outside the lines. Now, Miss Peggy, I know, Nana Moose, you love your poppies. You tell me that every time I talk to you. So I was thinking about you when I created this card. I was thinking about how much I love you and was thinking that um, you would probably really enjoy this. So, okay, so now what I'm gonna do is I have a thank you stamp. It came from the Pansy Patch. Now that is one of our new stamp sets, Pansy Patch. Super cute set. I really like the various sentiments in here. Um, and so I decided that I was gonna use this thank you. Um, I liked the font on these. I thought these were quite nice. And so that's where I came up with that. And so I have my Memento Black, and I'm just gonna add that right here to the bottom. So we're gonna just ink that up really good, and we're gonna add that right here to the bottom. Perfect, perfect, perfect. Okay, so of course, this is where the magic happens when you put it right on top of the background. When you have a lovely image, yes, it's supposed to bleed through when you're using your Stampin' Blends, don't be alarmed, it's supposed to bleed through. Sometimes if you start to dig a hole, yes, it does happen, um, you wanna probably put something down to protect your surface. Um, and so just think about that when you're, when you're using the Stampin' Blends, that that's um, usually a good idea. Now I've never had to really do it with my, the thick paper, but the thin paper, sometimes um, it's a good idea. Okay, so here we go. Let me look to see if I can see. So you add that right to the center and it absolutely pops beautifully, doesn't it? Oh my gosh, I love it, love it, love it. Okay, so then we have some jewel rhinestones and I was trying to decide which, you know, do I need a jewel? Do I not need a jewel? Where do I put the jewel? I don't know, I was struggling. 
Um, but I decided that I thought it'd be kind of cool right there actually, you know, on the U or the O. That's what I meant. The U, but the O. That makes total sense. <laughs> you guys know what I'm talking about, right? <laughs> Oh my gosh, that's sometimes how Doug and I, we have conversations. They're like, you know, quite funny, really. Um, okay, so I am looking over there. Hi, Ms. Patty. Hello there. Okay, so here we go. We've got our poppy and the thank you, and it's just lovely. So on this one, I actually made a little bit darker. So this was my original, um, and it looks like I may have added a bit more ink on this one. So depending on how dark and how much time you spend inking that stamp up, you can get a different feel, right? You can get a different look. So I just love that and I hope you guys did too. So if you liked it, I would love to see some hearts. Um, and uh, if you uh, liked it, would love to give me a thumbs up too. I'd appreciate that. Okay, so then I wanted to show you, well, what if we, clean this and you know you could also take let me grab my chamois here i have this new little table over here um, that mr carpenter made for me and i am so excited it is absolutely amazing he is like awesome and i'm so grateful for his hard work on my table um, and it's like this little well i can't give it away yet we're going to do a video on that okay so this is the same, this is the brush, um, dry brush, right? That's what we used before. So I don't know that I told you the name of that one, but that's what that is. So what if we did, we did our yellow? Actually, I probably would start with the yellow again, right? Because you wanna go off with a lighter color if you're gonna overlap um, so that you don't mess up your stamp pad, right? So we would add our yellow up here and get a nice good, Bit of ink up there and then I would add my pumpkin pie just like that pumpkin pie okay so we're gonna add that and you can kind of see if it's got ink on there or not um, and sometimes your eyes play tricks on you you might need to practice it a couple times that's okay this is poppy parade and I'm gonna I've been using this all afternoon making all kinds of samples so I should have known to maybe put a bit more ink in there um, I guess that was kind of a rookie mistake oh well okay so then you would take your sponge daubers again so you have the two different sponge daubers and we're just gonna kind of soften that line in there so that way it kind of gradiates together right it blends together so this one's the poppy parade and the pumpkin pie so we're just kind of blending that all in there so I think that looks good and then I have another piece of basic white cardstock and I'm going to add that there and I'm going to close it all right so here we go we're going to kind of give this a good push and just kind of swirl on it. I like to put good pressure on it and then we'll open it back up. And so that one, I guess I got a little cattywopped, but that's totally okay. I don't think anybody knows how it's supposed to look anyway, right? So, but that is really, really pretty and a really neat technique that you can do. So here, let me show you the card that I created with it. And so that is the card that I had fun doing. And so this card, I did the exact same thing, um, but I didn't do it on camera where there's like under pressure, right? Um, so, but it's really fun and I hope that you give it a try. You could do blues, you could do purples. There's so many different options, right? Lots of ways that you could do that. So here, take a look at this one. This one is diagonal, okay? And the other one is going horizontal. And then here is the Stampin' Up! example as well. And you can kind of see the different colors. So I just thought that was super fun. What do you guys think? Are they liking them, Miss Amanda? Oh, they're loving it. Yay! Hot okay. Hot. Hot. Yes. Hot. Oh, that makes my heart happy. Thank you. Hi, Karen. Hi, Linda Mitchell. Hi, Gloria. And Arnette is in here. Hello there. Hi, Sharon. Oh, thanks, guys, for being here with me tonight. 
I'm so grateful that you shared your Friday night with me. So thank you for being here. Hi, Catherine. I just, uh, I saw Brandy's card sent you an, uh, a comment. Um, but I'm right here. So that's Amanda or Priscilla. <laughs> no, thank you. I appreciate you helping. Okay, so here, let me show you something else. Um, I'm going to just pull this back over again. And the reason I'm going to show you this is because I think it's a really fun little like, oh, little aha moment, right? So um, this is the dry brush, right? This is what we've been using. And that was my Simply Chamois. Love that thing. It is quite fantastic, really. And so what I did, uh, let's just do it, right? But you know, it's going to like make me cranky if this thing stays like catty, ah, that's all good. Okay, moving on. Who cares, right? You guys don't care. No judging, no judging. Might be a little, <laughs> might be a little crooked, but you know, it's all good. So this is Poppy Parade. And so this is really just to kind of give you another idea and another way that you can use this background stamp. That is why I'm showing you this because I think that there's so many different ways and we're just scratching the surface here, really. Um, there are lots of things that you can do. So this is Poppy Parade. I'm gonna rub on my stamp and kind of get that really good in there, inked up. And I'm gonna pull that open. Now see, I cut these down, so it doesn't bother me at all that, um, you know, that these edges. I cut mine down to the size that I want it. So I really like the option of, you know, kind of picking what parts I like to trim off, all right? So then I'm gonna take my chamois and you wanna make sure and get this guy really clean. So, you know, in theory, you should probably start with the lighter color first, but um, that is not what I did here today. So we're not gonna worry about that. So I'm gonna just make sure that this is dry. All right. Okay, now, so here was this image. Now, you know, there's different little crevices and, you know, to make this fun stuff in here, right? So if you take your cardstock, you know, this is how you stamped it, right? And so you take this cardstock and you turn it around and put it right back where it was before, then you can ink it up in another color. So let's just go ahead and Let's just go ahead and throw some Daffodil Delight on there, okay? Let's throw some Daffodil Delight and just see what happens, because that's what we do around here. We're creative, and we just like to just go for it. And so I'm just going to add some pressure to that, and we're going to pull it up and see what we get. Oh, how cool is that? Oh my gosh, that's so fun, right? super vibrant, super colorful, and um, I am sure your wheels are turning with some different things that you can do with that. So that is super fun, super fun. And all I did, remember, is I stamped it in one direction and then I turned it in another. So I saw that in the Stampin' Up! catalog. Actually, Amanda saw that in the catalog, the new catalog, and she said to me, oh my gosh, I wanna give this a try, look at this. And so I'm gonna show you Miss Amanda's card. Um, it was absolutely adorable. So this is our new background set. It's called Spiral Dye, super fun. Reminds me of like those tie-dye t-shirts, <laughs> right? Super fun. Um, and also the Party Puffins. Oh my goodness, they are so cute. We had to Google them and we were reading all about the little Party Puffins. They're adorable. Um, and so let me show you Miss Amanda's card. So fun, right? And so what she did, and I was like, oh, that's so clever. The same exact thing. She took her, um, I have an extra thing here. Um, and so basically she would have stamped it in red, right? So stamped it in red and then she flipped it around and then she inked it back up in the Daffodil Delight and stamped it right back on top. So that's gonna offset it because the image has been flipped, right? So think about that when you're working with some of these stamps, that potentially you can add more colors just by flipping it. 
So uh, we, a man, the big joke is a man is like, oh my gosh, my party puffin looks like, you know, he's a McMuffin from McDonald's or he's like a McPuffin. I know you think of McDonald's French fries, but I think he's super cute. Um, and I love his party hat too. So you did a really fine job, my friend. And I appreciated you doing that. So fun. I know, right? I love that. Okay, so we're going to set the McPuffin next door here. And so I'm going to show you, um, so we did this one, right? That's the one I did with you. And I'm going to show you a couple other designs. Um, so here is, let's see. So I'm going to show you this one. I mounted that one on white. So I thought that that was kind of, you know, kind of cool when you mount it on white. Of course, then that gives you the opportunity to, um, you know, stamp an image, color. Oh, I had some stuff on my fingers. I better clean my little fingers up because I am leaving prints. That doesn't make anybody happy. Have you guys done that before? And then you like get through the project and you're like, <laughs> and it's just like, where did I stick my hands? Um, okay. So at any rate, this is um, mounted on white, super pretty. I cut it down. And uh, you can certainly do that. Now I tried this one and I did not like it, but I'm going to show it to you because I think that's just all a part of learning. It actually looks pretty muddy in my opinion. Um, it is polished pink and uh, blushing bride, I believe. And they clearly do not love each other by no stretch, but I really loved my polished pink. So I decided to maybe add some, um, some memento black. Um, Amanda was like, well, is that Knight of Navy? Well, that might even have been better. Um, that would probably have been even better. But this one is um, Knight of Navy and Balmy Blue. So just some really fun backgrounds. And I think there's some really neat things that you can do with that. I mean, you can add a sentiment on that. Just really fun. Just a really, really fun um, way to create yourself a quick and easy background. Because um, sometimes we just need those cards that are quick and easy and quite fast when things happen, right? Okay, so enough of that one. I'm going to kind of look over here. I'm going to put these back out, show you guys these again. And I would love to see some of our comments and see what's going on over here. Arlene says, way to go, Amanda. Miss Arlene, Amanda loved the chicken card you sent her. So thank you for being so kind to do that. It's decorating my desk. It's decorating your desk. It sure is. So I see it. Yep. Yeah. Hi, Teresa Campbell. I'm so glad you're here. And Laura, oh, it's so nice to see everybody. And Sharon, I'm glad you guys liked them. Hi, Angela. You're going to try it when you get the stamp. You absolutely should try it. And you know, it's funny because I looked at this flower and I thought, you know, the flower looks fabulous, but there are so many other things you could do here. Um, you know, this is just kind of getting the idea started. Okay, so from there, let's see, where did I go from there? All right, so from there, I took my Stamparatus again, and um, I've got my Crooked Stamp, yeah, and I'm gonna just clean it up again. Um, of course, I could pull it up, but I'm not gonna worry about that. Um, you know, it's. Even I just said that I'm not going to worry about it and I just did it right. Okay, so I'm going to take, <laughs> you know, everybody's like, yeah, I know y'all are laughing at me, you know. I just, I'm allowed to not, you know, make up my mind. Okay, so here we go. So this is going to be Daffodil Delight. All right, so I'm going to take Daffodil Delight and um, I should have some Bumblebee around here too. So I'm going to take my Daffodil Delight. I'm going to ink this guy back up and kind of another fun idea. So ink this one back up and we're going to set it back down and push on it. Give it some love. Okay. And we're going to pop it off here. And then I'm going to show you something else. Oh, so pretty. Gosh, it's pretty. Okay. So then what I did is I took um, the poppy and you know, in this poppy, there is like this fabulous stamp right here. And it looks like I already have it mounted. And so I just thought this was like a, such a cool stamp. 
Um, you guys know I like backgrounds, so this is like really, I uh, just, you know, it intrigues me in there. What can I do with it? How much fun can I have with it? Um, so what I decided is I wanted to, you know, maybe make a little bit more of a background. So I'm going to take my bumblebee and I'm going to start adding maybe a bit more, I don't know, what are those called? Splotches? Yeah, that'll work. Splotches, sploogies, <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> um, but anyway, they're super fun and they just add, you know, they just add some more interest really. I just think it's super cool. Um, and so I'm just going to add those kind of around the edges and you can add as many as you want or not as many. It's entirely up to you. Um, so you can kind of play with that. And so then what I did is I basically, um, I took my um, basic black and I took a piece of, and there will be, if you're new to Brandy's cards, all the sizes and the dimensions are not, I'm not going to share those here with me today, um, but they will be on brandyscards.com. And so you can search this project under background stamps, um, dry brush stamp set, wild rose stamp set. Uh, you should be able to see those there. Okay. So here we go. So I would then cut this piece down to size and that's going to go right there on top. And of course, you certainly don't have to do that, right? You could just use the original one that I did first. But let me show you one of my favorite stamps is the Flowering Blooms. This stamp is like off the charts. I love it. Love it. I know I love them all. I know somebody out there is saying she loves them all. No, I do. I do. But this one is like super cool. Yeah, it's like even cooler. And um, if that's a word. So here, this is the stamp stamped in Memento. I think it's really fun, but I wanted it to be a little bit more, have a little bit more oomph, if you will. And so what I ended up doing is embossing it with clear embossing powder. So the black really popped a little bit more and it was quite a sharper image. And so then what I did is I actually, you guys can see this, yes, I did this on purpose so you could get your creative juices and be like, oh, where's she going with this? So here we go, here it is. There is the finished one, yay. So again, that fun background, it settles a little bit as it dries. And then of course, you know, you don't really see it once you cut it down. I mean, it just, all you can really see is just kind of a bit of, you know, just a bit of the splotchy stuff in the back. Really fun. And take a look at the difference. So this one was embossed, right? And so I basically took my Stamparatus and I stamped this flower until I got it nice and dark. And then I cleaned my stamp and then I inked it in Versamark, stamped it right back on top and sprinkled clear embossing powder. And then when I did that, I got this beautiful, absolutely stunning flower. And so both flowers are striking, but boy, that really jumps right off, doesn't it? So, so, so pretty. Um, so yeah, so that one was super fun. But then I thought, okay, I have like, it appears that I'm really obsessed with <laughs> Bobby Parade Daffodil Delight and Pumpkin Pie today. So I decided to try to pull in some neutrals and show you something maybe a little bit different. So what I did, I'm going to just set this one aside over here and kind of get myself organized again. And so what I decided to do was I decided to pull um, some, let me see, this is gray granite. And so again, I used this flower and I did the exact same thing as I did with this. Um, and instead I stamped my dry brush in gray granite on top of gray granite cardstock. So you don't always have to stamp it on white. Sometimes it's fun to stamp it on the on color cardstock, right? Tone on tone. So check out that one. Oh, is it that fun? Oh my goodness. I mean, it just took it a different direction, right? Um, very classy. Um, you know, I think that could be a bridal card. 
um, an anniversary card. It's just really, really lovely. So I hope that you guys like these. Um, so let's see. The background, this is a great background to make. Absolutely, this stamp is so fun. So I know that um, many of you picked that stamp as your host code gift. So I can't hardly wait to send you a tutorial and of course that stamp set. But the other ones are pretty cool too. So I'm excited to show you kind of what I did with those too. So anyway, we kind of changed that up. So here, let's just go back really quick. So what I think is super cool is remember we did we did the different directions right so you have the different directions here you have horizontal then i did a more in a diagonal with the poppy parade and then here we've got another color so we've got the different colors this one is more of you know has more of this you know kind of a a second background stamp doesn't it and so that just is kind of switches it up a little bit and then this one is more of a tone on tone so that just kind of gives you some fun ideas of course this one he is just super cute so i had to pull him in here he was with the spiral die so don't let that he's not one of these but he is super cute and um, pretty much the same technique um, so anyway that's super fun so i'd love to see which one do you guys like the best Hi, Jen Peters, a sympathy card for this one. Oh yeah, that would be beautiful. Absolutely. Hi, Judy Crook. Oh, I'm so glad you like these cards. Oh, that makes my heart happy. Hi, Gladys and Shirley. Thank you all for being here. I love the green hearts painted moose. <laughs> Donna, Donna's in here too. Donna Kessler, I'm so glad. Okay, that you guys are liking these. That makes me happy. All right, so here, let's see what's next. Um, I'm going to set that aside and I'm just going to show you a couple things here before we move on to the wild rose. Um, so the wild rose, let's pull it over here, the wild roses. This was also one of the stamp sets and this one is in the spring catalog. Um, but the good news is it's carrying over to our annual catalog. So this is fun, um, you know, some of the different things that you can do with this one. This is Coastal Cabana and it's just inked up Coastal Cabana and stamped. And then I decided, okay, well, what about Bermuda Bay? That's super fun too. And then I decided, well, you know, why not? You know, and again, these are bigger. I cut them down to how I want them. So don't be alarmed if there's edges. Um, but this one is embossed. So I embossed white on top of the Bermuda Bay cardstock. So Bermuda Bay ink, Bermuda Bay cardstock, this one's embossed with white. This one is more of an embossed resist. So I embossed white, the white uh, wild roses on the white cardstock. And I used our blending brushes. Um, and you know, kind of a little tidbit is when I was coloring them, I, um, I colored my yellow first, and then I colored some of my um, pumpkin pie. But I forgot to kind of wipe the yellow off of the white, you know, the embossed resist. So I got kind of more of that orangey color. So my yellow didn't, didn't, uh, didn't stay. So just make sure that you wipe down and, you know, the, uh, the embossing areas before you change colors so that you get that true, beautiful color that you're looking for. And then this one is Poppy Parade. So lots of fun things that you can do there. But this is the one that I liked a lot. And this one is the Bermuda Bay. And so I took this one and I decided, okay, I'm gonna emboss it in Bermuda Bay. And it's just, you know, super easy. I mean, super easy. And so this one, I stamped it just like this with my Stamparatus, lined it up, stamped it, cleaned my stamp, added my Versamark, stamped it again, and then I did my clear embossing powder and heat set it. And I just get this beautiful shine and it's Bermuda Bay. And it's actually clear embossing powder. So pretty fantastic. Um, I do not do this enough and I absolutely love it. I see demonstrators, um, you know, emboss on color cardstock with white and it is quite striking. And I just, I don't do it enough. So I was like, okay, I'm gonna do it. I'm totally gonna do it today. So that is kind of a fun, simple card. So the next one I've got to show you here 
is my wild rose, okay? So sometimes, um, you know, it's quite nice sometimes if you just ink your stamp up, you can certainly figure out where you want your paper and you can kind of get everything prepared ahead of time. Um, but sometimes it's actually just as nice um, if you ink up and just stamp it once and then you can see, oh yeah, it fits great, right? You can already see it fits in there good. So what I'm gonna do is I have here um, my poppy parade. So we're gonna ink that up again and get that good and inked up. All right. So I'm trying to just get some good ink on there. Like I said, I've been using this guy all afternoon, so I should have probably added some more. Um, okay, so what I'm gonna do, and actually it's not that stamp that I wanna do that, or I'm sorry, it is that stamp, but I wanna do it on Poppy Parade cardstock. Right, so we're gonna go Poppy Parade on Poppy Parade. I'm pulling a switcheroo on y'all. Okay, here we go. So we're gonna just kinda get some good pressure on that. All right. Yeah, that emboss resist, thank you for sharing that, Priscilla. The emboss resist technique is really cool. Um, you're basically embossing, um, and in this case, I embossed in white. I'm gonna just go ahead and show you here real quick again. In this case, I embossed the white on the white cardstock. And then I took my blending brushes, which let me see if I have one here. I do. I am a part of getting my new table. I moved all my stuff around. So basically what you would do then is you would use your blending brush and you would pick up ink and start to blend color. But what happens is, is here, I'm gonna go ahead and just do it and show you. Do you see how it kind of gets on top of that embossing powder? Um, I should say not powder, it's actually, it's already embossed. Um, but you just take a paper towel and you can wipe over it. And sometimes I'll dab it on a little bit of water and then you don't want a lot of water, just a wee bit. And just kind of go back over it and it gets really white again. So it's called emboss resist because the embossing resists the ink. Um, and you can kind of, you know, kind of get that sponged look. So that's what that is. It's super fun, super, super fun. Hi, Debbie. Thank you for being in here. We are so glad that you came. Not to worry. Oh, look at that. Oh my gosh, I love it. Love it, love it, love it. So look at that though, so that's on white. What a different look, right? So that's on white, so fun. Um, feels very Hawaiian, sort of, doesn't it? And then this one is poppy on poppy. Yeah, that makes sense. That's poppin', that's poppin'. poppy on poppin'. Something like that. Okay, so what we're gonna do now, so let's see here. Let me go and look at my little stash over here. And um, so I kind of stayed with my theme here. I was really digging the, uh, the black and the red and that whole sort of, you know, with these poppies, they're quite lovely. And I'm gonna flip that the other way because it kind of looked like all my flowers were going the other direction. So I'm gonna add that to the top, right? And so I just kind of use my fingers to kind of wiggle that in place. That's why I love my glue so much, all right? So here, let me show you the finished card. Now, today's video is really kind of about trying to share with you the different backgrounds that you can make. It's not so much about the fact that I use the same flower, um, and I know that I did, but it's about the background today. And that I want you to take these backgrounds that I'm gonna be sending you as gifts, and I wanna see how you use them and get creative with them. So I'm just trying to get your creative juices flowing so you can kind of, you know, get a starting place. So this is fun. This is the same poppy, and I put it right here on top, okay? So here, let's try something a little bit different. What if we took our cut and emboss machine? So here is the Mac Daddy right here. This is the big old, big old cut and emboss man, and we are going to put our cardstock here. And what I'm gonna do is I have a, um, one of the stitched rectangles, and I'm just gonna go ahead and just place it on there um, and just make sure it doesn't get too wonky. And I'm gonna run it through. 
And then it'll come through on the other side. Sounds like a few bones cracking, but it's all good, right? Um, okay, so then this is the fun part. Oh, I love these stitched edge. I mean, these are like my favorite. I've done these for the, you know, I've used these in the Creative 8 Retreat quite a few times too. I love these stitched rectangles. They are fantastic. Um, and they did make it over to the new catalog, so I'm quite excited about that. And I'm sure you guys are too. So they're um, the stitched rectangles. And there's quite a few. Um, I use these magnetic cards. Um, and if you, uh, if you would like to uh, have a look at those, just send me an email and I can give you that information. Um, but these are great. I absolutely love them. I guess this one probably would fit over there. But anyway, and I just kind of tuck them in these cards. And um, sometimes I label them and sometimes I don't. It's entirely up to you, but I can already see what it is. But if you like to do that, you certainly can label them. So here we go. So this is what you get. Um, you know, you could pop that up if you wanted to on a card. That would be super cool. Or maybe you take the same type of poppy card and you kind of make a window sort of. And you pop it up so that there's a little bit of a shadow and you can see that there's depth there. And so that comes from that piece right there. Um, so this was the original one that I showed you. And this was kind of a variation of that. So that's pretty fun, right? I just thought that was super cool. Um, just kind of a fun way to, to kind of share that. So you guys like that red and that black? It is pretty fantastic, absolutely. They just, they look so nice together. So, so pretty. Hi, Tracy. Big stamps look great behind photos and scrapbooks or framed items. Oh, I can totally see that. Um, and, you know, they, they make beautiful, um, you know, like in home decor and stuff. I've seen, you know, Priscilla actually made me a beautiful piece that I'm excited to share again this Christmas. Um, but it's absolutely beautiful. But you can make gorgeous home decor, absolutely. And, of course, behind scrapbooking and so forth. All right, so let me see. I feel like there's more, but oh, there is more. Do we have time? Do you guys want another project or are we getting kind of towards? Yeah, are they having fun, Miss Amanda? Do they oh, want an? Yeah, do they want another project? Do you guys want another project? I promise it'll be another poppy. Yay! It might be this poppy right here, but it'll be another cool background. All right. So they're saying yes, another one? Absolutely. Another one bites the dust. Okay, so stack stone. We haven't used that one yet. Oh my goodness, we haven't used that one yet. Okay, so a few months ago, I did this one card. Actually, it was, uh, now I can't, I think the stamp set was called Wildly Happy. And I had a lot of fun doing this one. Now, this is not the stack stone, however, it could absolutely be done using the stacked stone stamp, right? I mean, this is the stacked stone stamp and it could absolutely be done beautifully with that stamp. This is granite gray, that's the color, right? And um, this was just a fun card um, that I shared. I really enjoyed this and then I did the flap. And so then I wanted to show you, you could also, do the granite gray on the granite gray cardstock. A little different than the um, other card, because the other card was a brushed, the dry brush. So the, you know, the ink was on there a little bit differently, a little bit different pattern. This is the more of the stacked stone. But to kind of show you the differences, right? Um, so that was kind of fun. Uh, so then what I decided to do was take my stacked stone and um, let's see here. I'm going to pull this guy out of the way, set him aside because he's not actually the stamp set. So I'm going to set him aside. And what I'm going to do is I am going to pull out um, my next card. So I'm going to actually show you the next card and then I'm going to show you another idea. So check this one out. This one is Stack Stone. And when you think of that stamp set, you think, oh, I've got to do it in earth tones or 
um, you know, something like that. Well, you don't necessarily have to do that. Um, it's quite beautiful in other colors. And so this is Coastal Cabana and it's on Coastal Cabana. It's quite a summery, happy card with that flower that pops right off there. Your eyes go straight to it. So quite lovely. But then what I thought was, well, what if I took it a step further and I stamped the Coastal Cabana on top of Coastal Cabana. And this was like a last minute thing that I just happened to think about. And I said, oh my gosh, Amanda, do you think that would be pretty? And she was like, sure. So anyway, I haven't actually done this one, but I am fixing to do it now. So I have, I'm at four and five and a quarter, but I want to cut it down about an eighth. A lot of times I like to do it just a little bit more. Okay. So this is going to be five and an eighth, and then it would be four and three, I'm sorry, three and three eighths. Okay. No, that is not right. Three and seven eighths. You'd think I lost my mind. Okay. So here we go. <laughs> well, <laughs> Amanda always says, oh, I can't do math. She has a, a t-shirt that is super cute that Miss Patty, her mama bought her, and it's called the Math Ma Chicken. And it is so funny every time she wears it. She is no, <laughs> she's not a Math Ma Chicken. <laughs> no. No, not. Oh, you are so funny. Okay. So here, this, um, this is that poppy. And I just want to show you one other thing. You know, sometimes I think it's good if you can play a little bit with those sentiments too. I didn't point it out on one of the others and you may have seen this. Um, you saw here that I stamped the, the thank you down below. But sometimes it's nice to stamp that sentiment kind of over the top and maybe overlay it a little bit. Right, so that's just really, really pretty. It's quite lovely, kind of gives it a different feel. Um, so sometimes play with things like that. Sometimes it's the image that kind of takes a back seat and it's the um, sentiment that gets more of the glory that's gonna be maybe a little bit darker, okay? So we're gonna flip that over. We're gonna add some of our Stampin' Dimensionals. So I'm gonna add some of these guys here on the back. And then I'm excited to see this one. I haven't seen this one. Nope, I haven't. Amanda can tell you it's truthful. I have not seen it. It's a reveal. <laughs> it's a reveal. Hopefully it's a, a good one. <laughs> um, yep, there we go. Oh gosh, I have to say, I love it. Oh, love it, love it, love it. So I don't know, let's put, um, let's put the Coastal Cabana on the Coastal, on white, and let's just see, I mean, same thing, two different looks, right? So this is, you know, the Coastal Cabana cardstock. This one is a white base. Super, super fun. Um, same image, of course, you know, you can add a gem if you really, um, you know, feel like you need a gem or something like that. Um, you know, so you can do that. Um, I thought that this was quite simple and lovely, that I didn't think it needed a whole lot, so. Um, I just thought that was really, really cool. All right, so let's have a look at some of the fun things we've got here today. So this is, um, this is the one we just finished. I think before I do that, while Doug is zooming me out, I am just gonna close these stamp pads because I do not want to set anything in them. I would probably cry. Okay, there we go. So we have, you know, we've got the fun stack stone and then we have the dry brush and we have another dry brush, just kind of a different look. Um, you know, this one is stamped gray granite on gray granite. Then I kind of went here and showed you a few of the um, wild roses. So that was kind of fun, right? Just kind of, punch, you know, cutting that out with that stitched rectangle um, and, you know, insetting that. Um, and then this one is just right on top, which is just as lovely, really. There's kind of another fun way to do that. This one is embossed, Bermuda Bay. And then this one is just a different direction with your dry brush. And this one was cased from the Stampin' Up! catalog, copy and share everything. So you kind of get your mojo going, right? 
um, and it gives you a place to start. Now, let me tell you, if, um, if you are looking at the catalog and you can't figure something out, um, you can reach out to your demonstrator and they can look. If you're one of my customers, um, or even if you're not, please reach out to me. I'd love the opportunity to help you. We can pull that list and we can figure out what did Stampin' Up! use and we can get you on your way. So that's not a problem at all. Um, so this one is just kind of another fun type of look. And then of course we have the cute little puffin. And that one is in the, what is that called? The spiral die. So lots of fun cards. What do you guys, I hope they like them. I hope you guys like them. Hi, Kathy Kelly. Uh, yes, each one has something lovely in its own way. I would have to agree with that. Um, but I'm gonna have to say that my favorites are probably these two. Oh, I don't know, actually, because now I kind of like, oh, you know, it just depends. It depends. I can like go get water and come back and then be like, okay, I like this one better. <laughs> so at any rate, it's really a lot of fun. These background stamps are so much you can do. You can ink them up, spritz them with water, get a watercolored look. Um, just have fun with it. That's what's most important. They're easy to use. You need a stamp apparatus or you need the right block, which is an F block. Um, and so that would be great. Now I have some good news. I actually have, um, I have a couple extra spiral die clean stamp sets. And so if you're here with me today and, and um, if you're visiting me, please leave a comment. I would love the opportunity to have the computer randomly pick a couple of winners and send you the stamp set. And I would also, if you liked my cards, if you could give me a thumbs up, I'd be grateful. And just give me one, hit the like button. Just hit it once, otherwise you'll unlike me, right? We don't do that. So just hit it once and like it. Um, and that way, um, you know, if you hit that um, and you hit the like, then I'll, I'll grow my channel. So I really appreciate that. Um, and thank you for all the hearts. I can't actually see them on my side here. Um, but I'll go back and I'd love to read your comments. So I'll go back and read all of those. Um, so thank you so much for all of those. I'm truly grateful. And I hope that you guys had fun today. I mean, just, oh, these stamps are so fun to play with. Um, you know, and you just kind of have to let go a little bit. Some of the combinations I did did not work out. And some of them did work out. But the cool thing is, is you just don't know um, until you start playing with the different colors and just giving them a try, right? That's what we do. We're creative. Um, and sometimes that next mistake is like the best next project or background. Um, so just, you know, give that a try. Love the spiral die stamp. I know it's super cool. Very cool. And it's in the new catalog. So uh, you'll have to watch for that. Okay, so Janet says she can't wait to make a card with the tie-dye stamp. Yeah, it is so awesome. Hi, Phoebe. You love all of them. Thank you. I'm so glad. And Heidi Hooker. Hello, Heidi. Thank you for being here. And Carol, it's just so nice. Um, when I'm over here crafting, I can't see everybody. So to be able to come over here, I feel like I just walked into a party with all of my girlfriends and we're crafting. <laughs> it's so much fun. Um, Alrighty, so let me see. I'm gonna go ahead real quick and show you a few cards in the mail. I get the most beautiful cards from you and I'm truly grateful. I get beautiful cards from my team members. I get them from my customers and um, I'm just so grateful and I love them and I save them. Um, and so I'm gonna show you a few of them. So this one is from Miss Donna. It's absolutely lovely. She sent me this beautiful choker that she made for me. She actually sent one to Amanda too and it was just so lovely. So yes, mine was purple. yours was purple. So thank you so much, Donna. We just absolutely loved it. Loved it, loved it, loved it. So the next one is the Touched My Heart stamp set. And this was our host code gift last month. Remember that? So look how fun this card is. And this one's from Darlene, beautifully colored. I love how she did that. This could be a beautiful, um, you know, like wedding card, right? Um, and this one, isn't this one from Miss Sally? So cute. Love the little happy chicken. He is so fun. Chicken, he is so cute. Yep. And then I love how she did the sequins. So fun. Super fun. So this one, I love this stamp. I do. 
I like this a lot. And so one of the things that's on my bucket list that I will do one day, um, although we don't get phone books anymore, do we? Do y'all get phone books? I haven't seen a phone book in a really long time. But I used to get phone books and I loved that kind of thin paper in a phone book. And I thought it'd be really cool to craft with. So one day I'm going to do that. Maybe, uh, I don't know. I'm sure I've got something somewhere. All right, so here, and let me just go and tell you whose card this says. Oh, we don't have a name on it. Oh, that's a bummer. Okay, so here we go. Here is the next one. Um, and actually, these may have been from our swap. Maybe that's why, um, because these were from our team swap. You've got mail. I love the cute little eyeballs, you know, on there. So fun. That is like the cutest set, is it not? So cute. So, so cute. So here's another fun card. This one, only you would think to do something so special. Thank you. And then on the inside, it was Miss Barbara. And um, just such a beautiful, beautiful card. What a clever way, um, you know, that opens and that she has this piece here on top. Just so much talent, so much talent. Okay, here's another fun one. And that one's also very beautiful. That's from Miss Bonnie. Is Miss Bonnie in here tonight? I think I did see her. Um, and Rosalind so. Rosalind Haywood got a phone book just last week. You got a phone book, Rosalind? I thought that was pretty funny. Oh my gosh. I might have to have you rip me out a few pages. <laughs> um, I just think it's so cool. Well, you should stamp on it and see if it works. Crinkle it all up, because I like to crinkle it. Crinkle it all up. So it's like vintagey. Oh yeah, you could do some really cool stuff with that. Super cool. Okay. Priscilla said that was Monica Markham's card. Oh, was it Monica Markham's card? Thank you, Priscilla. Priscilla is one of our team members, and she's one of my dear friends. And Priscilla heads up our team swap. She does a mighty fine job. It's um, it is uh, it's a lot of work, honestly. Um, you know, to organize the swap and to collect all the cards and you know print all the postage and all the pieces that go to it. But it's awfully rewarding as well because you get to see all of the beautiful artwork. Um, and you get to send all these beautiful cards back to the people you swap with. So um, she has been organizing our team swaps and she's done a beautiful job. Um, so thank you for that, Priscilla. And I do want to just toot her horn another a little bit more because Priscilla did one of our team trainings uh, for Creative Eight um, yesterday and it was her first Facebook Live. And she did it like she was a natural and like she's been doing it forever. So I was just really proud of her and she just did a really beautiful job. So thank you for that, Priscilla, for, for sharing with us. Um, you just did such a great job. Claudia, so this is Claudia's card, absolutely adorable. I loved, loved that cactus. Okay, so here's another fun card. This one's from Car um, Carmel. So I just thought that was super cute. And um, oh, look at this Easter card. So pretty. Oh my goodness. It's Karen White. So pretty. I might, uh, I might have to play with that. I like, the, I like how it opens. So fun. I received so many lovely Easter cards. Thank you for that. Just really, really appreciate those cards that you've sent my way. Um, here's another fun one. Gosh, look at that. What a piece of masterpiece right there. That's a shaker card. That one's from Karen. So fun. It's got the little um, candy things in it, you know? The, I don't remember what those were called, but they're in the spring catalog. They're super cute. Um, and then she added some of the, um, you know, there's like some little, what are they, like gel dots on the, on the ice cream cone. So cool. Very cool. Love it. So pretty. Love it, love it, love it. And then here's another fun chicken card flying by to say hi. Hey, chick. <laughs> oh, wow. Look at that. Is that not fabulous or what? So it's a, um, I think it's an easel card, right? So fun. So it kind of sits up. I think it's supposed to tuck back in there. Um, so cute. Oh, look at the cupcake is like got some glitter on there. Looks like some dazzling diamonds. That looks so fun. What a cute, cute card. Oh, love it. This was from Karen as well. Very talented. So nice. All right, the last card I have to show you here is from Carla. 
and I really liked the simplicity of this. Very, very nice. Um, this is actually embossed in silver, silver embossing powder. And then it looks like she's also got her dragonfly in silver and her sentiment. Um, just really, really lovely. Some Highland Heather um, and some darker, you know, maybe, uh, maybe that's a back Blackberry Bliss maybe. Not totally sure. I'd have to look, you know, against the catalog, but it's absolutely stunning. So, okay. Well, I hope that you guys enjoyed seeing all of those cards. They're absolutely beautiful. Y'all are talented and, you know, you guys are big shoes to fill. I've, I see your cards and I'm like, okay. Um, but you know what's really cool is I get ideas, like all kinds of ideas from your cards too. And I have um, kind of an editorial calendar in my office where I come up with, you know, I see your cards and I'm like, okay, I want to try this and blah, 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 and I want to do this and with that stamp set. And so, you know, Amanda and I really have fun trying to kind of, you know, kind of think that through and come up with some ideas. So thank you for inspiring me um, with your creations. Okay, so I think that's it for me today. Um, don't forget the new catalog goes live on May 4th. So you guys can, you know, jump in there. And if you need help placing an order, if you don't already have a Stampin' Up! demonstrator, please let me know. I'd love the opportunity to help you and earn your business. I can send you a catalog. And also my retired store has been updated. That's right, my mother-in-law has updated the retired store and there's lots of good stuff on there. I actually had just a few uh, celebration items left. So I've added those to the retired store. So if you missed a couple celebration items, you might want to just go have a look. Um, they don't generally last long, so make sure you don't wait. Um, and then of course, if you're interested in potentially joining Stampin' Up, I'd love to welcome you to our team. We have an awesome team and really we're friends. That's really what it's all about. Um, we're friends, we love to fellowship, we love to craft and share and pray for one another. And um, I just feel so blessed to have those, uh, those ladies that I love so much. So if you're interested in joining, let me know. Just send me an email and I can answer any questions you have or, or we can maybe schedule a call or something like that. All right, I think that's it for me today. Thank you Priscilla and Amanda for being here and thank all of you for being here as well. I couldn't do what I do if you weren't here to encourage me and support me and um, enjoy my work and what I do. So thank you so much. Make sure you're sending those cards. Make sure that's what you need to be doing. Send those cards, get those out there and um, bring joy to others. Take care. Until next time. Bye everybody.